Greetings comrades from Mr. Gantles, and this is the, you could say, follow-up video to, um, to my angiology, well, I'm trying to understand angiology video, uh, video, so, as you can see from the title of this video, I'll be trying to do the exact opposite and trying to understand demonology, and I just need to let you guys know beforehand that it was not easy trying to understand this, because the sources for they use to leave the sources and try and understand what angels are and stuff. It's a lot more reliable. They try to trust sources about what demon. Sorry, buddy. It's just a lot more reliable than trying to trust the sources of what demons are. I mean, frankly, it, it's you'll see, you'll see what I mean. Okay, especially when you get to like the, the trying to organize the structure of them and what these these things are. Okay. Oh, and I, just just another another warning here. Uh, the, if you. I know that studying angelology may seem like some people think, oh, it's a good two shoes thing. And then this t the studying of demonology may seem like really cool or whatever. I would advise you to not just just restrain yourself as if, if you do try to. Because there is the very there is the real, very real danger that if you study too much in demonology, you'll end up being consumed by it. Not saying that two people who study so much demonology get possessed, but you really shouldn't let it run your life. You should know when to draw the line because if you get too consumed with the subject it, it will start messing with you and in you know, guess you know that's just you know too much knowledge then is a bad thing so i mean because i i had to draw the line a couple of times but this isn't the first time i tried to do demonology i have tried to look it up uh, a couple of times before but i had to draw the line because i knew that i was getting i was getting too deep into it so this is almost like a shadow you could say uh, 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 explanation so what exactly are demons? Well, demons are were angels. I mean, technically they are still angels, but they're the rebellious angels who rebelled against God and then were kicked out of heaven uh, by with along with Satan, right? So technically, they, they sh their their physiology should be the same as angels, right? You know, they're, they're almost like the understanding of it. You know, they're um, they're immaterial, but they have immaterial bodies. They um, you know, they they have they have, they have like an immortal soul, stuff stuff like that. The one thing that needs to be remembered is that no angel has powers of sorts. They receive their power through God, almost like they're a channel for it. And through their service to God and doing his work so they can receive it. Demons are similar, but they receive their power from the perversion of reality through Satan and magic and all that. So people who like, you know, sorcerers and stuff, you know, magic and all that, it's a perversion of reality gained through demonic power. So, I mean, I'm not saying that someone who plays, like, with cards or whatever really is immediately, you know, gets somebody demonic power, but j just keep that in mind, okay? Because the very, the very key thing that you need that will be pointed out here is that whereas the, the, uh, whereas uh, the angels uh, are, you know, all about order and stuff, because God is a god of order. He's, he created a very ordered uh, cosmos with very ordered laws that you people are still figuring out to this day. He, he's all about order. Reje the rejection of God leads to chaos, and that is what distinguishes demons and makes them so hard to understand. A third of all angels were kicked out of heaven during that process. Again, we we, we, uh, we saw that in Revelation, Revelation 12, 4, which basically which specifically mentions a third of the stars of heaven, which may not sound like much, but it does link to based to the idea of the angels. Okay, so a third of all angels ended up going down to earth. Now these demons, they're not sure. Maybe they've appeared throughout history, appeared appeared as gods, but they are not the same. Okay, they are not of gods. They are not omniscient, but they are very, very clever, and that's one of the problems. Like sometimes, some people who have faced um, like the exorcists, they have said that demons try and uh, one of the ways demons try and tempt their way into your life, well, try and get their way into your life is by tempting you through knowledge, because they know uh, they they are very clever and they know a lot, which is why you've got to be very careful of them. They can demons cannot do what God does not let them do, which means they are not omnipotent. I mean, it's I put the link in the description below. But one of the chief guys and one of the chief one of the guys big exorcists, okay, works of the Vatican. He says that apparently demons have to follow specific rules. Like they will, they cannot possess you unless you let them. Like there, there are rules as to why, as to why, uh, there's the demonic possession and stuff. It may sound like, why does God let them possess you? But again, there are rules. A demon will not just look at you and go, hmm, I'm going to possess, I'm going to possess you. No, that's not how it works. It has to. That you have to let them into your life. You have to accept them into your life. Like that's one of the reasons why Ouija boards are not sure, aren't allowed by a lot of uh, Christians. I mean, not even you know, not just the Catholics, but a lot of Christians. 
because it's too dangerous. You are basically opening yourself up for demonic possession. And, well, you know, God respects your free will. If you want to, if you want to mess around with demons, you're very welcome to, but you cannot blame him for what happens next. I mean, sure, he may send, a, he may send over an exorcist to help you uh, after, and then you realize your mistake, and you beg never, and you beg for forgiveness, and try not to do it again. But seriously, demons cannot. Demons are very limited in what they can do, so you don't have to worry about being possessed by demons unless you specifically go looking for one. Like in a lot of those movies where you see them getting possessed, like in these archaeologists, uh, archaeology sites, you really don't have to worry about that. I mean, you'd have to. Almost like, almost by consent. Like you, you'd have to physically know what you're getting into to actually be possessed by one. But that doesn't mean you should try and experiment now, because that that's quite dangerous. Demons are also not omnipresent. Uh, omnipresent. So, I mean, uh, there's apparently some people who claim like Satan appeared in several places at once. But pff, that's, that's probably just pe the demons coming in his name, right? If if he could appear everywhere all at once, life would be a lot harder. A demon's purpose is to basically induce humans to sin, to try and distance ourselves from God. Through venial sin, it's more like, you know, you're, you're having a small argument to your friend, right? You know, you're not getting along too well. A, moral, a mortal sin, okay, I'll go into these another time, but a mortal sin, it basically, it really distances yourself from him. Like, it's a really big thing. I get a huge argument and, you know, you, you, you like your, your friend's like, he's just looking at you, like, why are you why are you saying this? And then you feel then you don't want to be like near him. Like that that's what it is. They're trying to basically make you sin to separate yourself from God, which is the exact opposite of what angels do, which they're trying to bring you to Him. So what some in some ways demons can do this. Again, you have those who try and use like who try and tempt people into following into the various routes or whatever. But you have some who try and scare people into following them. Because imagine imagine like you know you're lying in bed and then there's like this demon like manifest in front of you like this horrific monster, and then and then you scream so that that scare you right? And you're probably like probably threaten you, try and make you worship, uh, you know, try and leave God and stuff. It the demons have a whole have a whole bunch of methods, and they yeah like I said they have been. You know, they, they do try and torment people through visions and revealing themselves and through possessions and stuff. I mean, exorcists exist for a reason, to get rid of them. They, and they typically try and tempt people into committing heresy or apostasy, following the pagan religions of venerating idols, which, again, is quite hard to avoid nowadays, given how much temptations there are. But seriously, as Revelation says, the, here calls for the endurance of the saints. Just resist, okay? Just resist. You need to learn what's right. Now what's wrong? Okay, just resist. Again, one of the big things that will happen is that if they do tempt you to sin, then one day they'll say, oh, you sinned. You cannot. Oh, you sinned. God will not forgive you. But he will. He will forgive you. So don't... That doesn't mean you should continue to sin. It just means that if you sin, if they force you to sin, and like you end up giving into it, you can stop right there. You can leave it right there and then. Okay? Just remember that. Now, the Bible does record... Numerous possessions, especially in the New Testament. In uh, in Luke eleven twenty four to twenty six, he uh, he says that apparently demons, when they're not possessing, they reside in arid places. Whether you want to imagine that as a desert in hell or somewhere else is up to you entirely. As you can imagine, the disciples have witnessed to numerous exorcisms. So, in, you know, that and I'm gonna I'm gonna list basically list give you a list of uh, exorcisms, places where you can find exorcisms in the Bible. So there's Matthew eight sixteen eight twenty eight to thirty three, Mark uh, one twenty three three to twenty seven. Uh, there's just a couple because there, there are numerous exorcisms in the, in the Bible literally by Jesus's own name he, he commands them in his name to leave which is what exorcists try and do now in case you're wondering about the visions like what what do demons look like right well demons can change form as you can imagine technically they can manipulate matter which is why the dominions you know they gotta be careful about that and they try and mess up the universe but they can basically they basically change their appearance uh, for instance in a 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15, uh, St. Paul warns that Satan appears as an angel of light. And so it's no surprise that the other demons can do that too. Yes, demons demons used to be angels. So there are fallen seraphim, virtues, dominions, angels. No fallen archangels, no. That's that's because that's a rank more than anything, along with probably extra responsibility. But So there's no fallen archangels. But so there are different types of angels, and there are fallen ones of each. And so you'd think, okay, well, are they down there? Like, would you recognize them? And, it, and the answer is more than likely no. And the reason why is because by rejecting God of order, you know, the one who gives them, like, who they are, their very essence, by doing that and following their own perverted wills and thoughts, they've become perverted in form themselves. They are no longer who they used to be. That's why demons are typically uh, 
presented as monstrous and ugly in appearance because they you know they've, they've lost the grace they've lost their divine beauty though some demons and uh, like the devil some of you know some of the ways the devil has appeared are in animals right like you know goats and dragons and serpents right so you know serpent in the garden of eden the dragon you know, the great red dragon in revelation and the goats which is for some reason what you see whenever someone tries to do the stuff about the um, about baphomet which is, you know, it's a, he's a master of shape-shifting, which is why you've got to be careful, because sometimes I'm the person who offers, you know, like, you've got to be careful about, especially, like, this is particularly important in stuff like lust. You've got to be careful about this. Incubi and succubi, another example, they're attractive. They're meant to be attempt people into committing sexual sins. But those, incubi and succubi, that's another, I'm, I'm going to do that, a gigantic theory about that, because they're in their own class for me. I'm going to, I'm going to do a theory about them, because it's, I'm not trying to say they're like they're interesting, but there's something about them that should be explained because otherwise it's it's quite confusing. Because you see, like just just to give you an idea about it, angels, as we know, Jesus told us they are incapable of having relationships like men and pe like men and women. So angels and demons do not have genders, which then begs uh, the, qu the question: just then, what's the point of incubi and succubi? If they don't have genders, how do they tempt people? And I will explain that in the gigantic theory. Don't worry about it, okay? But there have been other people who have a. Uh, throughout history who, history who have tried to explain the concept of demons and stuff and like what, what some of the sometimes what they can do for example basil of caesarea um, he attempted he tried to explain how possession worked through vapors and condensation then there was um, saint augustine who believed that the demons were imaginary so they existed in the mind but they, they couldn't you could invite them into your mind and stuff you know it was like that so you've got to resist you've got to have a strong mentality a strong mind to resist them and that was and if you didn't then that was how they possessed you and then ambrogio de vignati uh, believe that the demon body is a hallucination, so it's kind of similar to Augustine. And yes, and demons do use various symbols. I mean, we don't know if they have um, individual symbols about this. Again, you gotta go to be careful if you're not about getting too involved in this sort of stuff. But you know, say typical ones, satanic cross, the symbol for sulfur in alchemy, the six, six triple sixes, and an upside down pentagram. I'll do another video about symbols. You're gonna love it when it does come to trying to understand demonology. You gotta. Be careful where you look. Grimoires are meant to be like these magic books, which are used to summon demons and spells, so you really shouldn't trust them, right? I, I tried looking up a couple on Wikipedia, and they made no sense. They continuously clashed with each other, because that is what it is. God is not the author of confusion. Satan is. It is through his. It is through him trying to him confuse him trying to make different interpretations of God's work. And, wor and words that he confuses us, and it is through that confusion that ends up basically make making us go, what, what, how does this work? And then, and then he, he tries to lure us towards him. And the, these grimoires seem to have possessed. They all see. They always seem to try and explain like a sort of structure for demons, because as you know, there are this, the the nine choirs divided into the, the three spheres for an, uh, for angelology, but. Hell doesn't seem to have such a structure. And again, you, you, can, you can try to do your research on this, because there are numerous ones. For instance, the Latern of Light, in, written in 1409 to 1410, each, uh, the guy tries to basically explain uh, the, type, the types of demons by the seven deadly sins. Or there was no, Alfonso de Espina in, in 1467, who tried to... Uh, you're trying to use mythological activities, try to organize the structure of demons. So, you know, you'd have like incubi and succubi, possessive, familiars, druids, but it ended up, it was a bit, the criteria were a bit hard to understand. And that's when King James came in, who divided them into activities, which I think they can, I think they make a lot of sense. So there's the spectra, which uh, these are the demons that uh, are responsible for, responsible for building possessions, so you know, haunted houses. There's the, op the op there's the oppression uh, demons, which are responsible, which are basically poltergeists. You know, they antagonize specific people and follow them. Then there's the possessive spirits, which the uh, possessive demons, which basically are responsible for possessions and require exorcism. And then there's fairies, which are basically where magicians and sorcerers and stuff get their power from. You know, they get those power, their power from the demons. The demons teach them how to pervert reality, all that sort of stuff. This, even then, it's still a bit sketchy to understand this because you can't trust what demons say. That's the one thing that you like. Even in the movies, okay, they'll they'll say it. You cannot trust what demons say during an exorcism. They're probably trying to say what you want to hear to get you to hesitate or stop so that they can attack you. Michaelis, okay, 
this guy in 1613, Sebastian Michaelis. He was told this hierarchy of demons by this demon called Bereth when he was like, trying to exercise a nun. If you read this, it seems quite complicated, and you think, oh, that's complicated, you know, that can't be fakes, but it also doesn't seem to make sense. Because, it, and although there are specific things, yes, yeah, so they talk about like fallen seraphim, fallen cherubim, fallen thrones in the first hierarchy, then the second hierarchies, and third hierarchies, right? And then they say, and then, then, then he lists a group of them. Like Beelzebub and Leviathan and Asmodeus, and he talks about just how, like, well, who they are and what they were, and then he says that they're they're what they do and which saint they're opposed by. But that doesn't that doesn't seem to make sense. Why would these demons be opposed by saints? They would they would be opposed by angels, and that's that's one of the problems with it. So although it, these these sorts of things, you could say, hmm, there's a lot of this seems very detailed. It seems plausible. You can you simply cannot trust them. Exorcist I was looking at says that when the demons are exercised, they end up uh, you know, they end up being sent to hell where they're then punished. And then they, uh, by Satan for failing, then they're sent for another mission. And then my priest told me that he had a theory that, uh, that when a demon is exercised, they're judged by God and then sent to hell. So maybe it's a combination of that. Which, it seems simple, but it seems a lot more plausible than the, all these kingdoms and parliaments and kings and princes of hell and armies and stuff, all, all that come from apparently demon testaments, which you can't trust. You, you just can't trust them. Me, personally, my structure, I'm not saying you've got to believe this, but th this is what I think. So I believe at the top, or rather the bottom, because, you know, everything's reversed because of the orientation, you have Satan, right? Okay? You know, the leader of it all. And then he probably has a group of, like, these closest fallen angels of his, the ones who groups him first, or the... Or like, you know, those who are in the highest hierarchy. So maybe because uh, Thomas Aquinas says that uh, that Satan is a cherubim, so maybe these are the, these are the seraphim. Because, okay, we don't know exactly if if um, if Satan was an, a seraphim or a cherubim, but then let's just stick with the cherubim here. So maybe, you know, the high-ranking angels are the, or the closest ones to him. Okay, we got them there. And then beneath them, you have the subordinate spirits, which is not a purely alien concept. I personally believe that the ones closest to them are more like the demons who are furious, who are raging inside from having been rejected by God for their attempt to basically try and become more important, to be on level with God, right? Because that, that, that's what happened with pride. So I, and I, so I believe that these demons are like, who, who are furious. They're basically dedicated their whole life to trying to fight uh, the forces of good. And as such, they're you know they're directly underneath all the like they're sure probably maybe there are various hierarchies I don't know but you know they have these group there who are willing to do whatever he says. And then there are the subordinate spirits who who serve Satan in fear, because think about it because uh, you know especially after they 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 became perverted after being rejected by God, they ended up becoming corrupt in the head and probably like almost like self doubting themselves constantly and their minds are fractured you know her mentalities are gone. They probably serve Satan out of fear of being of being pun of being punished by God. They're going to him because they believe they have no other choice. I mean, though technically those those angels are those fallen angels are the fools for even though they had the foresight to know exactly what would happen if they rebelled, they still did anyway. But, uh, what can you do? And okay, and these subordinate spirits are responsible for control and specific temptations you face. For instance, let's say you've had a bad lifestyle, right? You've had child abuse, or like, as a child you were abused. These demons, were, these subordinate ones would have more power or more authority, according to Satan, so you'd send them a tougher task. And they'll target you specifically because you have suffered, you've had a bad horror past, and they will target you with specific temptations to basically bring up that sadness within you, to basically make you constantly doubt and and, you know, slowly erode you away. Then you have the insubordinate spirits, which are basically crazy and all over the place. I can't remember what saint it was, but there was a saint out there who want, and please do in the comments and say if you know who it is. There was a saint who once said that if you could see all the fallen angels you uh, are on the earth around us, you would not see the sky. That's how many there are. And I'd say that these are the insubordinate ones who basically just go around like they're, they're normal, they're normal temptations, right? Almost like they're poking you, trying to make you, trying to tempt you into doing stuff. So, you know, you look um. So you're looking at stuff in the shop, and then there's a de then then they come along and start saying, "Go steal it, steal it, take it." No one will know, and then they quickly leave, and you're like, "Why do I even think that?" You know, compared to a, a, a you know a reformed thief who's going past the shop, and then then you have these you know these are uh, controlled uh, you have these subordinate spirits who are like, "Come on, man, you you know the thrill of stealing. Go on, take it," and you're going, "No, no, I'm a good man. I've changed." And he's like, "Come on, man." 
you know, you know that. You know, you don't you don't you want to do that again? You know, specific and in in and in specific temptations. That that's personally what I think. But in in the end, this could be all a lot of rubbish because, like I said before, angels have a specific order because they serve the God of order. He, God is of all, God has created order from chaos, right? From nothing, he created something. So as such, that it makes sense that they're structured. But Satan is the opposite. He's the projection of that. He is it is chaos. Maybe there are no hierarchies whatsoever. Maybe it's just a big free for all. Was Satan just biding his time? Maybe, maybe that's what it is. We, we just don't know because no one's been to hell exactly and done an analysis of this. I mean, I'm not talking about the saints who have apparently seen hell, but they but they haven't really interviewed Satan about this. And you know, there are all these stories going around, all these grimoires and stuff. Bunch of rubbish. So it's not. So we probably will never know until after the events of Revelation, which makes something to look forward to, to finally realizing just how, to be, how thankful we are to worship one of order over over the chaos without him. Obviously, some people don't believe in demons, which actually suits them, actually suits the demons very well, because they don't need to waste resources and effort in trying to tempt them or bring them away from God. I mean, if you don't believe anyone is there to try and tempt you to basically leave, uh, or to go down the wrong path. Well, it's, it's the equivalent of walking blindfolded down a street full of criminals that may attack you or mug you or anything. I mean, not saying that you can see demons, but it would be a lot better if you could recognize their influences, even if you just, even if you, even if you don't see them, you could just feel like, you feel like you have the, all these weird thoughts coming, like, mm, no, I'm gonna move on, you know, get out of the situation, you know, focus on something positive. Because a lot of this is basically just, just avoiding. When he gets to actually confronting, that's different, and I pray that only the exorcists ha only the exorcists have to deal with that, because it can be frankly terrifying for people who have to face this you know, and confront them. So that's that's the basic understanding of demonology. I'll probably go into depth in a couple of things, like the idea about the incubi and succubi, because my idea about that, like the gigantic theory, hopefully it'll make sense to you guys. The whole thing about this is to basic is to basically say, you know, to say demons are perverted angels. They they don't have their grace. They're not in the grace of God anymore. They don't have, you know, his, um, they're not they're not with him. They're not supporting him. And as such, they've they've just collapsed in. They've there's no way they can really be who they were. Just the absence of him has ended up making them all twisted and cruel. And in then that's what happens when when you reject it, when you reject God like that. We don't know. We we don't know what the hell, we don't know what hell is like and I, we I pray that we pray that we never know. We never have to. But Guys, seriously, don't get too into this. I mean, if you want to see some of the crazy ideas, you can, but do not get too into this, because it is very, very easy to become consumed with this sort of stuff. And you think, oh, you know, it's cool, I'm learning my demons are going to be an exorcist. Seriously, it's not. It is not. Like, on that side of the exorcist, you, you can see read it yourself. No one wants to be a demonologist or exorcist. It's a calling, because it is such a burden to go through. It is horrifying it is gives you nightmares but you have to do it because you are you've been called to you you are you're the only person who's been who's able to be trusted with this so guys seriously do please be careful when it comes to this sort of stuff so on a positive note that leads us to the end of the video so you don't have to listen to me blabbing on or warning you anymore because hopefully you have taken my warning into account that, that's all that's all time for, that's all i got time for this video if you like this video please give a like please share my, share my videos please do contact think of them any other video i want to do Please subscribe to my channel so you can see more of this content. And please ring bell so you can be updated with my video releases. Yeah, the um, gigantic theory about the Incubus sucker by should be coming out at some point. Look forward to that one. But until then, that's demon. That's basic demonology, guys. Don't get consumed with it because it could lead you to bad places. Anyway, see you next video, comrades. Until then.